told you yesterday. I'm going to marry Mr. Rochester. Why don't you wish me happiness? You must forgive me, my dear. I, I was a little surprised. You see, gentlemen of Mr. Rochester's position don't usually marry governesses, do they? Now, if you'll forgive me, my dear, I have a great deal to do. Madame Villiers, Madame Villiers! Monsieur says you have to put on your bonnet at once. We are all to go shopping. Mademoiselle? What? Monsieur Rochester says you have to come with him to buy new clothes for you. I have to come too to help you choose them. Oh. Come quickly, please, oh, Mademoiselle. Yeah. Come and put on your bonnet. <laughs> Monsieur dit qu'il va vous acheter une belle robe de soie. <laughs> Is everything unpacked? Uh, yes, sir. Good. Ask Miss Ayer to come in, will you? You look surprised, Dan. What are all these things? You ordered them when you went shopping, remember? But I didn't order these. I only ordered a, a plain grey dress. Your order was so modest, Jan. I had to supplement it myself. Don't you think this magnificent? Blanche Ingram never had anything so handsome. It would need Blanche Ingram to wear it. I'd rather have the dress I ordered, sir. Don't you like this? Oh, it's beautiful, but... But what? Well, I couldn't wear it. It's not suitable for me. Nonsense. You won't know yourself when you're dressed in these. That's just it. Oh, please don't make me say I, I... I can't wear any of these things. You mean you won't? No, sir. Very well. Take them away. Give them to Adele to play with. I had hoped that you'd take some pride in the position I offered you. I was fool enough to believe that you'd wish to dress in a manner befitting my wife. So I do. But not in a manner befitting your mistress. What? That'll be your married look, I suppose, sir. Is that how you'll look a year from now? When I ask you a favour, it doesn't suit you to ground. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to wear this. May I? Of course. When I told Mrs. Fairfax, she acted so strangely. What did you say? Nothing. She didn't even wish me happiness. Does she think it wrong or something? Why do you say that? Well, does she think I'm not good enough for you? She has very old-fashioned ideas. Forget about her. You see, I'm not beautiful, and I feel I'm not worthy of you. I love you, Jane. No one in the world can look as beautiful. To you, perhaps but not to other people. There are no other people. There was only Jane Eyre and Rochester.
train. All right, Jane. I won't leave you. Now try and tell me what happened. Why did you call for help? Try and tell me what it was, Jane. She came in and she stood over me and her eyes were blazing with hatred. I, I'd never seen such a look on any face. Then, then she went and she got that veil and she ripped it in two with a terrible violence and, and she came to me and I thought she was going to kill me. Who is she? Who is that woman? There was no woman, Jane. You had a terrible nightmare, that's all, but you're safe now. Safe? But who knows what that creature may do? Jane, you speak as though you believe this. It was a dream, that's, that's all. That's not true. What are you trying to hide from me? What's going on in this house? I have a right to know. Dream, Jane. Look there. It was no dream. I've told you before. Grace Poole. It wasn't Grace Poole. I saw her face clearly. It was no one I've ever seen in this house before. Why can't you tell me who she is? I can't tell you, Jane. After we're married, after tomorrow, when we're far away from here, but not now. But you must tell you me. You must trust me, Jane. Will it happen again? No. I give you my solemn word. Let me take you to Adele's room. Stay with her for the rest of the night. Lock the door. Edward, the wedding veil. Well, Mrs. Fairfax, master's in a proper state this morning. He's been ringing his bell for me half a dozen times running, and then when I got there, he hadn't a notion what he wanted. Aren't you going to put it on? There's plenty of time. Only the bridegroom being nervous, isn't it? It's um, Aren't they lucky? How long will they be away? About a year, I believe. Oh, that's a long honeymoon. Queer the way he hates Thornfield. Hold your tongue, Leah. Well, it's true, isn't it? It's Fairfax! It's Fairfax! What's the matter with you, child? <laughs> Monsieur Rochester, he is cruel. He is wicked. Just talk nonsense, Adele. Pull yourself together. It's true. It's true. He won't let me go to the wedding to see him and Miss Herbie Marie. What? Please, please, speak to him. Ask him if I may go. Those are Mr. Rochester's orders, Adele. No one is to go. <laughs> Mr. Rochester wishes everything to be as private as possible. No one is to go to the church. Well, anyone would think he was ashamed of his marriage. <laughs> Leah, be quiet. Oh, stop crying, Adele. You shall stand at the door with us and wait for them to come back. Not unless she's better behaved. Where is Miss Eyre? She should be down. I, I hope you'll be very happy. Thanks. Go and find Miss Eyre. Tell her I'm waiting. Here I am. Jane, you look, you look so beautiful. Are you ready? Yes. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Mrs. Fairfax, see that everything is ready for our immediate departure on our return. Certainly, sir. Come, Adele. Come, dear. It was. Now, what do you think? You shouldn't have seen me like this. It's supposed to be unlucky. Are you afraid? No. No, I'm not afraid.
all hearts shall be disclosed. The divider of you know any impediment, whereby ye may not be joined together in matrimony, ye do now confess it. For be ye well assured that so many as are joined together otherwise than God's word doth allow, are not joined together by God, neither is our matrimony law. Edward, as thou take this woman to thy wedded wife. Stop! This marriage cannot take place. I declare the existence of an impediment. Who are you, sir? What right have you to interrupt? I am a London solicitor, and my name is Briggs. You know these people? This gentleman, by name, Edward Rochester of Thornfield. Go on with the marriage! I cannot do that, sir, until I know the nature of this impediment. Perhaps it can be got over and explained the way. I hardly think that's likely. The ceremony you're performing is a bigamous one. Mr. Rochester is married already. Here is a copy of the certificate of his marriage 15 years ago to Bertha Mason at Spanish Town, Jamaica. All that proves is that I was once married. You have no proof that my wife is alive. Mr. Mason? When did you last see Mrs. Rochester? In April. Where? Thornfield. Rochester, let me see her. And what relation are you to Mrs. Rochester? A brother. Is this true, Mr. Rochester? Is your wife still living? Yes, but this, this girl knew nothing. You must blame me for this. I can't believe it. I've lived here for many years, but I've never heard of a Mrs. Rochester at Thornfield. No, but you've heard the village tales of a mysterious lunatic up there. Yes, my wife. He knew how she was. He never warned me. Yet he comes here today to destroy my one chance of happiness. All this, Mr. Rochester, is no excuse for bigamy. Excuse? How easily you say that! But you've never seen her, have you? You don't know my lawful wife. Come and meet her. You too, sir. Come, Jane. Come on, Mason. She'll be glad to see you. Come along, Mr. Mason. This has to be done. Keep quiet, can't you? Stop that noise, you hear? Open the door, Grace. Come on, Mason. Or are you afraid? How is she this morning, Grace? Oh, pretty well, sir. Fairly quiet for a change. You remember this room, don't you? Give me the key. You're never going in there, sir. You know what she's like when she sees you. Give me the key. Well? Don't you want to see my wife? Ah! Keep away! Keep away! Ah! Open the door, Grace. Ah! 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 Ah!
She has an uncle in Jamaica. He has business relations with Mason. When Miss Eyre wrote and told of her impending marriage, he happened to speak of it. I had to tell him you were married, Edward. What else could I do? Jane, of all people. Well, where is she? Jane! Jane! Will it be taking action? Will Mr. Rogers, no. My business here is finished. He's suffered enough. <laughs> One might almost think she understood. Jane! Jane! Open the door! I must speak to you! Nothing to say to me, Jane. No word of reproach. Hatred. Jane. Jane, for God's sake, speak to me. Do you hate me so much? No. But you no longer love me. Why did you do it? I tried to send you away. On my honor, I tried. But I couldn't. I loved you too much. Jane. Jane, you won't suffer by this. We'll go abroad for good. We'll go at once. Jane, say you'll come with me. Say you'll come with me, Jane. No. Why not? No, why not? Because I am married. Is that what you call marriage, that? I can't go with you, sir. So I was mistaken even in you. You don't love me. All you valued was my position, the rank I could give you. Now that you can't be my wife, you'll be nothing to me. Oh, Jane, Jane, don't let me say this. I know they're not true. I'm, I'm nearly out of my mind. What's altered between us? What difference can a ceremony make if we really love each other? Do you still love me, Jim? Yes. Then stay with me. When people love each other as we do, it's wickedness to part. You wickedness to stay. Oh, Jim. I never meant to hurt you. I only tried to snatch a little happiness for both of us. Is it wrong to seek to be happy when one has lived in hell for 15 years? 15 years? Yes. I was 25, Jane. Not so very much older than you are now. Why did you marry her? It was arranged for me, Jane, by my father. He wanted me to be rich. I was a younger son with very little property. This woman had a fortune. My father knew that the family was tainted with madness, yet he never told me. The marriage took place, and I discovered what I had married. Oh, my God, what did I think of it? And I was bound to have a life. Don't talk about it anymore. No, you must hear the rest. There's not much more. For years, I lived in Jamaica. Then, then my father and my brother died. I know relations here who knew of her, so I brought her back to Thornfield. I engaged Grace Poole to look after her, and I went abroad. Do you know what I did there? I sought forgetfulness in whatever company provided it. One frosty winter afternoon, I rode back to Thornfield, and I found... Do you remember, Jane? No. I found someone I could truly love. Oh, Jane, Jane, you must stay with me. I won't let you go. I can't lose you. We'll live abroad. No one need ever know. 
It wouldn't be wicked to love you. It would be to obey you. Why? Why? Whom do you injure? You've no relatives or friends who care what happened to you. I care for myself. Oh, Jane! Oh, my being cries out to love and comfort you. But I must go. No. Well, I've got the strength to do it. God bless you, sir. 